Newton, Iowa for Game Renard's penultimate short track race of the season. Iowa Speedway is the host of the hy 225, the 14th race of the year. Closing in on the season finale of Michigan, the championship contenders are starting to become clear. Zachary Galello's performance this season has been hard to ignore, especially in the last three races, all of which he was in the conversation for the victory. Kirsten Martinez's strong suit is her consistency. She's finished 10 of the 13 races inside the top 15. Kyler Sestry, while quiet at the start of the season, has broken out recently. Only mechanical failure at Dubai has knocked him down to third in points. Hector Garcia's Anjado Ford has been strong all season, and Lotus Esprito has kicked it into fifth gear, starting the quarter with three top fives. Out of these drivers, Delolo qualified the highest, scoring his second pole of the season. Starting the outside of the front row for the second week in a row is Evan Hunter. In Dubai, he was out of contention for the race win by the time the field came up on turn two. If there's anything he needs to do once the green flag drops, it's to focus on not replicating that mistake. The field approaches the line, ready to start racing for 75 laps. At the 7 eighths of a mile short track, green flag is out, we're racing at Iowa. And Zachary Lowe with an amazing launch gets almost a, yes, a force tenth of a second lead over Colin Teague in second place. Colin Teague's going to try and reel him back in slowly, and Cody Goforth must have spawned on the backstretch. Must be why there's smoke, but regardless, no caution out. We stay green for now, and that four tenth of a second advantage has just been cut in half. Colin Teague trying to get to the back bumper to Lolo. So go back here, Nathan Stapleton found his way up to third, but he might relinquish that to the 28 of Kirsten Martinez. Put the 28 in third position. Now Lexi Herman looking for fourth. Jefferson on the low lane as well. Maybe he can try and get to the inside of the 67, but he will not. As Delolo stretched it out once again on Colin Teague. But Teague was able to wrap the lower lane a bit better than Delolo did that time around. Lap 5 underway. And Teague goes higher. Now here comes Teague, but Teague had to, left, he had to lift off the gas right there. A whole bunch. Not quite sure why, he was definitely going to make it. He just stepped out on him. Jefferson's trying again. Caution's out. And it's on Jack and Landon Thomas. Thomas with heavy damage. On Jack as well in this one. Caution's out for the first time today. Get you guys back to the restart after checking out what happened to bring out the yellow. So real simple here going down the back. Peter on Jack on the outside of three wide. The 69 sends it in there. Gets into the 36 of On Jack and Lane and Thomas comes in there late. It's heavy damage. From the aerial camera going into the corner, I uh, you see the 36 also come down, but the 69 definitely sent it in there. I'm pretty sure On Jack probably thought he was clear and uh, wanted to get low before the 69 got there, but it just didn't end up working out. But regardless, that is what brought out our first caution of the day at Iowa. Let's get back to the restart here. As for Goforth's lap one accident, he just ends up getting out of the groove there up the racetrack into the 63 of Lotus's burrito. And ends up moving down into the 15 of Skylar Taylor. Goes for one loop. Saves the car, but was fairly off the uh, the pack before we got that caution to bunch everything back up. All right, we have received the one to go at Iowa. Lieutenant Landon Thomas, the only one retired from that accident. But 
36 of Peter on Jack also back here as well with the 84 of Cody Goforth who got the Kosh news looking for and will be back with the uh, the rear field but at least in the sight of the pack nonetheless so the low leads Colin Teague second Chris Martinez third Lexi Herman in fourth Fifth place, it is the 67 and Nathan Stapleton. Seventh, Jefferson. Eighth, Garcia. Ninth, Murder. The fourth. Ninth is actually the 45, Elaine Thomas. And Nathan T Ormond rounds out the top 10. Delolo leaves room down low for Colin Teague, and the whole line is going to go with them. And the 28. Also giving pressure to Teague down there. Here he, she goes to the inside. Side by side to lead lap 10. Colin Teague on the outside gets it, but the 28, Martina sends it in there. That'll put Lexi Herman to uh, second place now. As Colin Teague back to third. Up high goes Martinez, but not enough for... Herman to get there on the straightaway. Now she'll try it. But Teague will as well. Bit of contact between the 53 and 28 there. As they go 3 wide for the lead down the backstretch. stretch. 28 up high. Going to probably lose some spots. Can't get the run off top. Actually, yes she can. But can't quite get down low on the 31. Of Garcia. So Colin T leads. Lexi Herman of the 53 now chasing. And Colin T, this would be another driver getting their second win of the season. Same would be the case if Lexi Herman came away with the win, but not if Hector Garcia did. That would be his third. First coming at Homestead, second coming a few races ago at Atlanta, and he's looking for second place here right now on the 53. The top three, once again, is Ford. Showing that they are the strongest manufacturer, but you have a lone Chevrolet in the top five right now. And Dodge back here also contending. Here's Stapleton once again. He's going for a spawn as team owner. And Ormond as well in this top 10. Jefferson is falling back. But back up front. Garcia and Teague battling it out. Garcia went a little wide right there. Sent it in a little bit too deep. Gave up some time on the lead. Or perhaps he's experimenting. Perhaps he's trying to go high. Search for some grip. It's just not quite working out for him. Right there, the 99 went higher, the 31 lower, and you can tell based on how much the 31 gained, but he's going to give it up once again. DeLello just got third. So from fourth that last lap up to third. Now Martinez is going to get back to fourth. Herman loses a few spots. She is now in trouble, and... Fifth place. Now Martinez trying for third here on DeLello. Side by side for last spot on the podium. But look out back here. Three wide. That's the 45 trying to split the middle. It will work. Lane Thomas got out of the middle. And clears both Ormond and Stapleton. But up here. Garcia right on the back bumper. Colin Teague. Just 20 laps in. Garcia's looking down low. Caution's out. So 71 of Christian Vargas to the inside. Goes Garcia. He's going to get the lead. And he'll lead them to the caution and the restart. DeLogue gets third. Martinez back to fourth. Lexi Herman retains fifth. Start to caution with a second time today. Roberto Crowns Jr. is back here, but 
Vargas seemed to be the one involved in this. So the 1 and 71 racing pretty aggressively back here. And they are both going to get a run on this O2. Who is up high. They make contact with him. Dives down low. I'm not quite sure if he hit the inside wall. Uh, he did not. But that sends Vargas around for a 360 spin. On the front stretch. Oh my goodness. He, all, <laughs> he almost takes out the uh, go forth right there. I think he's trying to get pack because he was spinning across the line and the caution came out. So he's trying to get his track position back and hurry up towards the uh, the front of the field and get in line. You can see here from afar the gap between these two and the O2 shrink rapidly as Pelagia gets out of the groove. These two approach and that's going to send Vargas around as it hooks the O2. He goes towards the inside. Vargas spins across the line. Luckily, the caution came out as he was spinning, but he's still a little bit further in the pack than he would have hoped to be before the caution came out. But we're under caution for the second time today. We'll get back to the restart and go back racing. Approaching a third of the way through this event. Back live here at Iowa. Hector Garcia, once again, your leader. Colin Teague second, below third. Martinez fourth, and Herman fifth. Lane Thomas back to 6th place. 63 of Lotus Desperado, your defending winner. In 7th. And in 8th, Nathan Ormond having a very good run. Probably the best up to this point of his season. Nathan Stapleton, the other Nathan, in 9th. And in 10th, it is uh, Pre McShane having a much needed good run. Sitting here in the top 10. With Roger Ray, Evan Hunter right behind. Back green, the top two launch a little bit better than Delello does. But Garcia, come turn one, gets away. Top three evenly spaced. Now Colin Teague. Trying to run down Hector Garcia. Had the lead up to the point where the caution came out. Just lost it at the line. Now he's going to try and get it back. He'll have a good shot here. Do three and four. And caution out again. No, it's not. And to the inside he goes. Slingshots to the inside. And grabs the lead easily. Now for third. Martinez under DeLolo. These are two title rivals. They get into each other. Sending DeLolo up the racetrack. Up above teammate Lexi Herman. And he is going to lose a couple of spots. But that didn't really put the 28 in the best positions either. Here's Hector Garcia once again. Side by side. Between these two once more. And it'll be Garcia taking the lead away. But now Lotus Desperado looking to play spoiler once more to the top two. She did it very well last race and it ended up giving her the win. But this time gives Colin Teague a bit of a bump heading through one and two. Putting him in a good spot to the inside of the 31. But it just does not materialize. And the 28 of Martinez now. Looking to get behind the 63, but now Teague dives down low, gets the lead away. Caution's out again. Oh, it's a parking lot on the front stretch. The 21's involved. We got to make sure these leaders do not pile in, but Colin Teague will lead them back. 63 P2, 28 P3, 31 P4. They kind of rubbed the uh, 69, but not too much damage. But this has torn up quite a few of them. As uh, the, this must have just been a big stack up. A lot of cars involved on the front stretch. 
We're going to have to take a look at what happened. A, a big one. At the 7 eighths of a mile. Iowa Speedway. So right here. Lexi Herman up top. Evan Hunter down low. Hunter sends it in there. Makes contact with the 53. There you see the 53. Or Herman almost hit the wall. But slides down to get away from it. And this is going to stack up the field. As they all come in. On the outside line, look at this. Just a, a, an absolute derailment on the top side. Heading into turn number one. That gives Wells, Keani, Nunez, Taylor, Vargas, Borkington, Crown Jr. Jefferson, I believe, was in this. Yes, he is. It's up here somewhere. There he is. Yeah, wow. I mean, they just did not check up in time for that accident. So it is a very similar situation to what we saw bring up the previous caution. But this time, all three cars in that three-wide mess went spinning around. Kind of in sync there on the front stretch. But then... In comes the rest. I believe the first one to get damaged is Aiden Smith. That directs him in front of the field sideways. And here they come. I think the hardest hit out of that was Keani at the time. But then in comes the 03, the 21. The huge mess. Uh, does Onjak get any more damage? I don't believe he does. He slows down in time. He was looking at that like, ah, look how many spots I'm going to gain in the running order by just slowing down for this action. Under caution for the third time at Iowa Speedway. What started out as a minor spin turned into a major stack up on the front stretch. That is going to take out a good quarter of the field, possibly. We'll get back to the restart. With a whole lot fewer cars than what we originally had. Back at Iowa and the retirees from this accident are plentiful. The 71, the 1, the 18, the 03, the 16, the 21. All out from that accident alone. And man, there's a whole lot of guys in that wreck who were having a not so great season. Did not need this blow. But the pace car goes in. And Colin Teague, ready to lead. The top five, a Lotus Esprito, Kirsten Martinez, Hector Garcia, and Nathan Stapleton to the green flag. And Teague got away pretty good, but then went wide in the very next corner. Allowing the Lotus Esprit to pull right on in. And now what's interesting about Lotus Esprit, she qualified in the 30th position. Which is the same spot that DeLello came from at Atlanta. But that's different. That is a speedway. that We, we, we see that a lot as speedways where the track's bigger. You can make up a whole lot more track position. This is a short track. And she is up here in third now as... She gets overtaken by the 28, who might end up going for the lead here. Gets a great run on Teague, who went outside that corner. Here she comes, through one and two. And down the backstretch. Side by side for third. The 63 and 31, but that puts the 99-3 wide. Did not have a good corner at all. And Martinez is getting away. No, look at that. The 31 had a really good quarter. That's stuck on the inside. He sent it in there and really stuck. Able to get a whole lot of grip through one and two that past time. And through three and four, was able to do the same. Good enough to get a run right out of the last corner and try and take the lead away, but really checks up there. Wonder if. We have another caution with that type of uh, move, but we do not. And this is actually going to pay off for Garcia. He takes the lead away from the 28, but uh, Martinez is back. 
Side by side once more for the lead. And Martinez gets it. Now what will Lotus Desperito do to try and catch up to the 28? Desperito did a good job at Dubai, capitalizing off of a battle right in front of her. Now, just one car and one hungry driver. For third, Delolo on Garcia, but now there's the 28 going up high. Disparito led that lap by just a hundredth of a second. 20 doesn't lose too much time. Now back to what might be sixth is the 31. And same with the 99. These guys are almost getting into each other. The 42 is making his way up through the pack. As uh, third in points after a mechanical failure at Dubai. Trying to look for the redemption. The same can be said for the 49 of Roger Ray. But what they don't want to see is the 29 up in second. Having a great points day. That is your points leader. Took the lead over from Kyle Sestri after Dubai. And not only that, but gapped himself by 55 points for the next person. Now that next person is Lotus to spring on the 28. So these two are right now going at it for the title. But... It is truly anyone's game. As uh, last season, we saw two drivers far out and away from the rest of the competition. This time around, who knows? As really, the top six have all been championship contending and perhaps even leading the points at some point. Delello to the lead. Not for long. Here comes Martinez. 30 to go. Martinez goes right on by. Evan Hunter is entering the scene. And that's someone we have not seen quite yet contend for the lead in the championship standings, but he has crawled himself out of a hole. Look at him muscle his way back past Alolo. But Evan Hunter was deep down there. He, I believe he was as low as 20th or somewhere down there, if not in the high teens. And now he entered the top 10. You got a glimpse of him last race in the top 10 points. But now he is in 11th. To the lead goes Disparito in the 63. And Delello is taken back third, not only third, but now second. I believe the 15 is stuck in a pit loop. Oh, don't come back up on the track. And for the lead is the low. Down low. Here's Evan Hunter. And this is race 14. And it was race 15 at Texas. That was Evan Hunter's last win, so it's nearly been a full season since this 11 car has been back to victory lane. But not only that, it's his driver in third place, trying to contend for a title, which is what he did last season, but this is her greatest rival so far. Sacker Delolo gets by Evan Hunter. And he is trying to get a gap on Kirsten Martinez, no doubt. And this would be the easiest way to do so. But he is under five from the 11. Hunter dives it down in there. And we have... A, a group now up front and that top six in points I think this might just be the top six right now as you got Delolo no Evan Hunter is 11th but who's missing I believe it's Garcia who's back in ninth but five of the top six right now leading this race In 
Aiden Martin in seventh. That's something we really haven't covered today. As these guys go three wide, they are getting very aggressive. And that's letting the 11 pull away. We haven't really seen that so far today, but it has happened now. Almost seven tenths of a second for Evan Hunter, but he gave a lot of that up. Look at the 42 up to second. And lap traffic of Peter Onjak up ahead. A Hunter will try to catch him on the straightaway. I believe he will. But the rest, not so fortunate. No, it'll be in heading into the corner. This is not what he wants to see. 42 gaining a whole lot. At least tried to. It looked like he did. So on Jack up high. Out of the way of Hunter. Out of the way of the 42. Does he hold anyone up? I don't believe he does. Ray goes by. But now Hunter is trying to stretch the lead again. As Ray trying everything he can to get that 42 out of there. Oh, but now DeLolo goes three wide on him. DeLolo second now. But these guys are bleeding time to the 11 car. Martinez trying to climb her way back up after a bit of a fall. But Hunter is coming up on more lap traffic that we will hit before the end of this race. Through three and four. We'll have to see down the front stretch where that would be a much better gauge. Alright, right here down the back stretch. Top speed was about 155. Looking at 11 here. About the same. So those two aren't dangerously off the pace. I'm not quite sure if we will catch them. But I believe they're just barely losing time. But regardless, they keep battling for second behind. And this pack back here is really no longer. It is strung out as we approach the end of this race. Just 15 to go next time by. Look at the five going back past the 99. But Stapleton, he fell out of the uh, top five earlier today. Once back in. Here's Ray going past Martinez. So Disparito seems to have distanced herself from the 29 just a little bit. But Delolo's still trying everything he can to get close. I believe the gap shrunk that time around. It was over a second last time. I think it's just one. But Disparito's job to try and get her second win in a row is just to reel the 11 in slowly but surely. And that's what she's doing. Gained about four tenths that last time by. But also she has to worry about DeLolo. But that might also be a motivator. You gotta catch one car, you gotta get away from another. Cut it by another point eleven seconds. Basically a tenth. And this burrito has separated from DeLolo completely. As DeLolo taking it a little bit wide. It'll be the points leader for sure after today, but... He'll have some competition from Kyler Sastry. And now, the 63 of Lotus Desperito, who might just pole vault herself up towards the points lead conversation... If she can close out the win, but that was a mistake that last time around. She didn't gain anything, but she didn't really lose anything either. She just lost one one hundredth, but still, that was not progress. That was a time loss, nonetheless. So she'll have to regroup and try to get back into a rhythm. 
gained four hundreds right there. And a lot more that time around. And Evan Hunter, as experienced as he is, he might be sweating bullets inside that race car. That 63 has been strong and known to run people down at the end of races. But once again, lost time. Look at Stapleton. I believe that is back to fourth. That's no, back to fifth. As Martinez losing spots. Could see a new second in points by the end of today. Not quite sure there's enough time. We are coming up on that lap traffic though. A little bit sooner. It's tough. Maybe, maybe not. But what's for sure is that these two have stalled out. They've pretty they're they're not gaining on each other, they're not losing time. It has been stuck between six tenths and five tenths. So it will take a mistake from the eleven, a big one, for him to lose this race. As this burrito back minus six tenths of a second, a little bit more. But coming up on the 89 of Aiden Smith. How will this affect Evan Hunter? DeLolo, I believe he's locked up third. Sastry, same for him, but fourth. Battle back here is for seventh on back. Teague's pretty secure. But here we go. Coming up on the lap car. And Disparito, about seven tenths of a second back. I don't know, maybe had to give up some time getting to the side of Aiden Smith, but did not catch him at necessarily a bad spot. I think Hunter's got this in the bag. I don't know, the 63 gained a whole lot right there and a whole lot again. We'll be approaching the white flag. Your defending champion will be looking for his first win in over a season. And a 63 is almost getting the wall there looking for anything she can. One lap to go for Hunter. It hasn't been a struggle, but it hasn't been on the same level that he was last season. He's trying to change that right here, right now. As he rounds off the final two corners to snap that winless streak and win in Iowa. This burrito ends up second place. And oh, caution's out. And Orman's destroyed. He was having a good run up to this point. At the very end, it goes wrong. Regardless, this race is complete, and Zachary Delillo will certainly stretch his points lead. But the question is, how much will Lotus Desperado from 5th gain? I believe she'll get up to the podium. Maybe past Hector Garcia. I'm not quite sure about Sastry ending up 4th, but it all depends if Kirsten Martinez exits. From second, it goes maybe back to fourth or fifth. We'll have to see if she, uh, she finished seventh here today. The 99 of uh, Colin Teague, but I had an order here, but uh, he is ninth in points now. He ended up in the sixth position, so he is trying to work his way back up. Roger Ray, pretty good in ninth. Um... Stapleton is, uh, right now, he's 14th in points. He could enter the top 10. Uh, and I don't know. I don't really see that happening unless Jay Jeffers and Lane Thomas, one of them, just falls completely out. Uh, it'll take a big jump for him to get back in. And uh, Aiden Martin, who is 
right now 10th in points, finished 10th in the race. Good for his bid in a solid points position, completely outperforming his team owner by a long margin. Um, I mentioned the 45 eggs in the top 10. I won't believe that'll be happening. He ends up 11th on the day. That is pretty good. That is less than a top 10 by 15 points, but nonetheless, I feel like from uh, 7th place in points with a, uh, let's see, just a over 100 point gap over the next, per, uh, well, uh, Aiden Martin in 10th. I feel like he's got good security in the top 10. And Lexi Herman, who is 12th in points, end up 12th. Stephen Colon with the uh, a good run today for the first time in a little bit. The best out of the t um, JJ Motorsports drivers. And Ricky Freeman Jr. trying to get back into his rhythm. Ends up 14th. He's up to 19th in points. Just going to look through the rest of the running order here. Uh, the 54 got lapped at the end. Maybe involved with that Orman accident. But Orman went from 17th to 21st. And uh, man, that team was looking for a top 20 this year. And on the last lap, just denied. It's just, it's been one wrong thing after another for the 24 team as a whole. Looking for a bright spot. And uh, Pensacola is coming up. That could be... Somewhere where things could go right for a team like Nathan Ormond or horrendously wrong because that is the really the only place where we saw the big one last season uh, involved like more than 10 cars. But people who did not need the days that they had, Jay Jefferson, I'm pretty sure just entered the top 10 recently, ends up 8th. I think he left the Atlanta doubleheader 8th, but... Uh, 17th. So he might just fall back out of the top 10 as Evan Hunter probably gets back in with that win. And Peter on Jack already running back there in points. He's just, he's, he's looking for a miracle win at this point. Same with DJ Reed. Aiden Smith has uh, has been middle ground this season. 18th in points. Ended up 22nd because of that stack up. And everyone else down here. I uh, can't really see who else. Uh, Mathis Wells. 30th today. 21st in points. He will probably sink further down. Uh, Doge Borkington ended up 16th in points after Dubai, 28th. He's probably going to plummet. So, highs and lows at Iowa. But regardless, that is it for uh, the 780 so mile short track. And uh, next race is Texas. And that's a good shot for Evan Hunter to go back to back. He won that race last year. He'll be trying to um, go two in a row in the Lone Star State, but plenty of other challengers are there as well. It was an interesting race last season. It is an intense race last season, for sure, as uh, the top two in points were top two in the race, and they just could not get away from each other, just edging each other out at the front of the field, making that multi-lane track work and really... Not until Evan Hunter got out in front of the field did we know which one was going to emerge with the points lead, as they were dead even heading into that race, I believe. Looking forward to the racing product that Texas puts on, truly unique to any other track on the schedule. But for now, thank you for watching the Gamer and Our Sports and Series. We'll see you next time.